Hi guys, this is Jamie Magritte coming to you from my craft table. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's kind of going to be a video as I go. I have an idea in my head, but I haven't actually done it. So it's going to be a as I go kind of how I come up with a, a card idea. So uh, let's go down and get started. I don't really have, I've got a lot of supplies on my desk, but I'm not sure what I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to start with a piece of Whisper White cardstock, actually two of them, and um, a few stamps, a couple from Rooted in Nature, um, the same two that I used yesterday, the little branch and the wood disc, um, and a couple from Pe Peaceful Poinsettia. Um, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do is stamp um, the poinsettia. And I'm going to do it in the um, crumb cake, I think. I've also got my some Stampin' Right markers on my desk, a mento ink. I have a blueberry bushel, a shaded spruce, mossy meadow, um, the uh, that real light green, I can't read it from here. Soft Sea Foam, Soft Suede, Cherry Cobbler, Real Red, and Merry Merlot. I've got posted notes, um, some foam adhesive, some glue, a Mento ink, and my st stamping chamois. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to use. I am going to also probably use the die to cut this out. So I might not show the whole video. I'm, we'll see. Okay, there's that. Put these aside. Just a quick wash. Okay, now let's put this aside for a minute. Let it dry. Now I want to do this piece. Um, must be I don't have the wood one out yet. Block. Let's put this away. If I don't put things away as I go, then they disappear. Okay, where's that little notchy? Maybe want it this way. Okay, and I'm going to do the same technique I did yesterday. I'm going to stamp it with the um, crumb cake and then. Do the edges with the soft suede. down towards the bottom but a little bit more towards the top okay wash that off let's put this one away done with it some branches coming up. Actually, let me cut this out. I'll be back. Pause ya. Okay, I'm back. I, I cut it out. I do want to color it. It's easier to color when it's not cut out, but I want to get an idea for where I want to uh, put some of these elements. I know I want this little berry one, and I think I want to do it in a blueberry bushel. <clears throat> so let's do that. I want to 
do and in a blue and the gray bushel seems to be a good color it's not out of stock or running low set it on there here <clears throat> I'm just playing sometimes it doesn't come out it's all right one at least on this side so these around <clears throat> Come on, open. Oh, this is the soft sea foam and that branch sprig this time instead of thumping I'm gonna do <clears throat> rock and roll. I don't, I'm just gonna see if I can get just a little bit of this other green on there. Something that's probably more effective. Let's see how this comes out. In fact, I might take the sponge dauber and soften that a little bit. off so I don't get transfer ink. Ink it. Rock and roll. This is sponge dabber. Yeah, sponge dabber works good. It gives you a nice soft transition from one color to the other. I want one of these over here sure how much of it's going to show because that other branch but without re-inking I'm going to put some here okay now it's clean poinsettia here. I'll try to decide if I want to add some poinsettia to it. I don't think I do. I think I just want to add some more of this branch. with that rock and roll is I get ink all over the edge of my stamp, which is not a good thing for me because then I end up with ink everywhere. So I think I want one more or two more over here too. Good.
like a triangle of see there's three blues and then there's like a trunk it balances your eye around the page that's what I'm looking for <coughs> I think I'm done with the greens Decide, should I do a, a gorgeous grunge background on it? I don't know. Put that right in the middle. I have this bow too. I'm not sure. I think it's too see through though for this. Pause a minute, I gotta go and blow my nose. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna color this and then we'll go from there. So, oh, I didn't bring any yellow marker over for the center. Okay, I'm gonna start with the reds. Now, I brought over Real Red, Cajun Craze, Cherry Cobbler, Blushing Bride, and Rich Razzleberry. Um, the reason I have Cajun Craze is years ago uh, I learned that if you put a little bit of a rust color underneath your red, becomes a little bit more crisp and a little more opaque. So I may try that, I'm not sure. Um, and the purple is so I can have another alternative darker color. All right. And I don't have all the colors, I just have a few of them. <clears throat> My mom gave me her old set and half of it at least was retired, so. All right, I'm gonna start, I think, with <clears throat> the real red. Some of these are small spaces. I'm going to use a little end. I think. I don't know. I guess I like the brush end better. I'm going to color 90% of it in with the real red. I'm going to take the light, the pink, the blushing bride. Let's see if I pull that out a little bit. <clears throat> My neighbor's dog is out. Okay, I'm going to actually do a little bit of tip to tip color because I want a little. Well, not tip to tip because I painted it on my surface. But. This is not blending out as well as I'd like, so I'm going to try a different approach here. My hand is not steady today at all. <clears throat> no, I apologize. Let me put you on pause till the dogs are done settled. Okay, back to coloring. Sorry, I forgot to turn the camera back on. <clears throat> um, I just colored these ones with the Blushing Bride. I'm going to come back in with the real red. Okay, this is ridiculous. I apologize. Excuse me. All right, let's try this again. So I'm going to go in and color these with the red. I was going to try it. It doesn't blend as well. I probably should have chose to use my blends. But I'm just going to color it in then. Make 
actually. I think I'm just going to color the whole thing with the red, real red. And then I'll come back and add some highlights and stuff. Or shadows. This is the cherry cobbler. I'm going to add some darkness down here at the bottom where the petals meet. A little bit up the center here. The petals meet. A little bit up the center. pretty good. Okay, so real red. That looks like a good color combination, so let's continue with that. Real red. Do a couple petals at a time. Cherry cobbler, and where the petals overlap. You just barely see the line. That's all right. And then down the center a little bit, add a little bit of detail or dimension. Basically, almost just tracing the lines that are there, but extending them out just a little bit where the V is there in the center, where the um, where they would meet. And then I think I'm going to go over it a little bit with the cherry cobbler, see if I can blend that out just a hair. Looks pretty good. All right, keep going. I like the fine tips that these have on the ends. So you can get in those small spaces even with the brush marker if you choose to. Kind of hold it up and down like this and then you can get right in there. In those small areas.
tracing and where those petals overlap a little bit with the cherry cobbler. going to be a shadow anywhere a petal would sit on top of another petal. And that's where I'm putting the cherry cobbler. But I'm also trying to make sure that you can see each petal, that there's a dimension on each petal. Okay, go back over it with the real red. Blend it out just a little bit. areas I missed. The very center I'll do with yellow. Okay. And I didn't end up using the purple, but you can go back in with the purple if you want an even darker shadow in some of these areas where the shadow would be the deepest. Just tap in a little bit of this purple. This is rich raspberry. Purple makes an excellent shadow color. And just in the deepest, where it would be the darkest. Just a tiny little bit. I'm not doing the whole shadow area. It, it just adds that pop of like a little bit darker, a little bit more darkness. Okay, all right now for the leaves. I'm going to start with my lightest color <clears throat> and I think I'm going to use some old olive today and a little bit of um, garden green. I want to do these berries blue so they kind of match these other berries over here. I don't have, well, well, this is kind of a wrong kind of blue. Let's see what I got. <clears throat> I have a Pacific Point. That's a little bit closer to the blueberry bushel. Not a lot closer, but I don't, so let's, oh, and I brought over a, oh, yellow. Daffodil Delight. I'm going to do the centers. And then I got a little tiny, I'm going to put a little tiny bit of the cur crushed curry in there. Just to, again, add that a little bit of darkness around them. Alright, let's do the berries first and get them done. So I'm going to take the darker color, which is the, uh, in this instance, Pacific Point, and I'm going to do a C on them, the darker color on one side, just pick one side, doesn't really matter which. Bride. All right, then we're going to take the Bermuda Bay, which is probably not really a great color, to, but I'm going to use it anyway because that's what I got here. And I'm going to fill in the rest of it with this Bermuda Bay color. And since I'm using this, I might add a little bit of the Bermuda Bay to these other leaves. Kind of like that. Okay, since I got the markers out, let me bring over this. And we're going to use the Bermuda Bay to fill in these berries since I got it out. And we'll tie it all in together. That way I know what I used and I'm being cohesive all the way through the card. 
sometimes if you do one part, then you can't remember what color did I use here. I don't remember. All right. Just do a little touch of this. Um, darker color. Just to add a little bit of... So they don't look so flat. always go back in with your white gel pen and add a highlight to any areas you want highlights. That always works too. Or a chalk marker. I like the gel pen better. I have more control. Gotta keep track of the time because I have to work today, so I'll have to start getting ready in about 10 minutes here. So I might not finish this today. Alright, I'll put this back aside. Let's do these leaves. Let's start with a lighter green. Oh, I missed a berry. See a berry underneath there that I missed? lighter green, which is pear pizzazz. I'm going to fill in all these leaves with the pear pizzazz. take um, a little bit of the Bermuda Bay that I used in those berries. And on some of these leaves I'm going to add just a touch of it. Right where the seams are, I'm just like tracing the veins just on a few of them and then I'll go in with a different green. I just want to make sure that the card looks cohesive so that the same colors are used throughout and if I use this in the berries I kind of need to use it a little bit somewhere else. Okay then I'm going to use the old olive. Maybe I better use the mossy meadow. And I'm going to do similar to what I did on the uh, poinsettia down here at the bottom. I'm going to go darker up the middle, wherever any of the leaves are overlapping. And I'm going to pick one side of the leaf to be darker. back with the lighter green which is the pear pizzazz. Go over it, see if I blend it just a little bit. 
Don't scrub your paper though. If you scrub your paper, you're going to end up hilling it. So just light touches, very light touch. That's how you add, add the dimensions. It's just adding a little bit of a second color. In this instance, I did three, but you really only need two colors. Okay, so this side, I'm going to do the darker. That leaf, I'm not even going to put any darker on because it's uh, kind of hidden there. back in with this lighter one. This one I did pretty much the whole side, so. And you can choose to do that too. It's just color one side one color, the other side another color. It works well that way too. that. Alright, my piece is colored. Now, I want to pop this on top of here. Before I do that, I want to figure out what sentiment I want to put on it. Do I want to do thinking of you, or do I want to do a Christmas one? I think I want to do a Christmas one. It's a point set. I'll do Christmas wishes, I think. Or should I do have yourself a merry little Christmas? Yeah, maybe I'll do that. This is gonna go here. I'm gonna put this over here like this. And this is an A2 size piece of card base, so I'm gonna have to trim it down a little bit. I'll try to keep that in mind when I'm putting my sentiment. I think I'm gonna put it there like that. Normally, I would get out my stamp positioning tool. It's right here. Let's use it. Might as well. I've got it out. That way I know if I mess up with my inking, I can fix it after I did all this other work. I don't really want to mess it up. So I want this to be in the corner there. And I want this right about there. I want it up a little because this goes up here. This is like more in the center. Like that. I think I want it like that. Okay. Oh, I gotta take the foam out. black memento ink for the sentiment. Oh, I put it on upside down, but that's all right. We'll make it work. <laughs> we'll just use it that way. That's all right. That's the kind of stuff that happens to me. Just turn it over this way. That's pretty that way too, so. All right, let's just mount this into the card like that. Use foam dots, I think.
Alright, well that's as far as I can do today, or for right now, because I do have to get ready and go to work. Um, next video I'll show making this actually into a card. Have a great day. Hi, this is Jamie Magrich coming to you from my craft table today. I'm going to try and finish the card that I started yesterday before I went to work. Um, let me scroll down and show you what's happened so far. <clears throat> okay. Um, as you can see, when I stamped the uh, greeting, I accidentally stamped it upside down, which is fine. It still looks nice, but then I noticed there's a couple spots that are a little bit uh, empty to me. So I was trying out things to try to um, fill it in. So I I had these cut out from before. Um, these leaves with this green glitter paper. And I put them in and I didn't really like them. So I didn't use those. I thought, okay, well I like these blueberries. So let me try. This is a white paper that I'd sprayed with shimmer. Then I added the little blue. I didn't like that. I tried um, uh, punching the, the sprig punch out of uh, some green paper, and it was just eh, I didn't like that so much. I tried the cutting um, this little die. It's this die here. I think it's from the Snowfall Thinlets. I can't remember exactly because I took a bunch of them off and then I couldn't remember which one this went in. But I think it came with this set. So I cut a bunch with the, this um, blueberry bushel cardstock. And I kind of liked that. But it was taken away from uh, the flower, I thought, a little bit. So I tried that out. Of course, I had to have five. Couldn't just have one or two. So I kind of liked that, but I didn't like it. It was a little too bold. So then I tried something else. I took the gold shimmer paper and I cut a few out with the gold. So I'm going to put one there. here and then this one I trimmed off the bottom a little bit so I could fit it in this little spot here and I think that's what I'm going to do so let me glue those in um, and we'll go from there and I'm using just Tombow if I can get it to start there we go not making a total mess. little tricky to get in there. So I have to get it in there just right so it doesn't hide my H on my sentiment. I got glue all over everywhere. Should use a different glue, I guess. All right, now I think I want to move that just a little bit more. All right, now I tried out a bunch of papers too. I think I'm going to do a real red behind it. I did trim this down a little bit. This layer is four by five and a quarter, and then this one is just an eighth of an inch larger than that. And then I'm going to use one of these um, card uh, 
gold foil edged cards and envelopes. So let's go ahead and glue these together. And the reason I didn't show you doing all this stuff is because I was in my pajamas. So I didn't really want to be on video for that. In my pajamas. I don't know why, but... made a ribbon, a bow, uh, with this, um, what is it called, real red, it's just real red, it's on page 200 of the annual catalog, it's just an eighth of an inch, um, real red ribbon, and I just made a little bow, and I'm gonna adhere that right there with a the glue dot, um, and since I forgot to do this, I guess I'm not going to. So I'm just going to do the ribbon with a glue dot. Glue dot. And ribbon. There we go. And that's my card. Thank you so much for joining me at my craft table today. I hope you have a great rest of your day.